Hello, and welcome to another teaching by 119 Ministries. Our ministry teaches that the whole Bible is still true and directly relevant in our lives. If you would like to know more on what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. Come now, let us reason together, says Yahweh. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Ask yourself the question, am I willing to reason or am I wanting to debate the topic of God's law? As we study the scriptures, we need to have an open heart in reasoning with the Lord. Be sure that it's the scriptures only that you use. I once received an email from a friend that said to me, Smarter men than me have read these same passages and have developed a doctrine of grace. I'm with history and those smart men. If what you suggest is what scripture says, it means that two millennia of Christian theologians have missed it. Martin Luther missed it. Augustine and Aquinas missed it. Wesley, Ursimus, Swingley, and Kant, Moody, and Graham missed it. Is there something they missed? <laughs> I can't help but think these are mere men. Am I to hold them up equal to Scripture? Think of all the brilliant rabbis who for years messed up their doctrines as well before Yeshua came to correct it all in his first coming. Are we not capable of doing the same? Are we better than they are and somehow immune from this? I have to confess that what my friend said gravely concerned me. He is holding to the teachings and traditions passed down by the fathers. This is the same thing that Yeshua himself preached against during his ministry on earth. Mark chapter 7, you have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. And in verse 13, thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Doesn't scripture warn us of man's teachings during this time? The scriptures state that people will gather themselves teachers that cater to their itching ears. 2 Timothy chapter 4 For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Doesn't man repeatedly mess things up only to have God send us a prophet or himself to correct us? Does man ever evolve to understand Yahweh better in Scripture, or do we fall away? Doesn't Scripture warn of falling away? 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. If you're a Protestant, you are at least admitting that from 4th century to about 1500 AD that the church developed incorrect doctrine. Many take one step out of Catholicism only to leave one foot still in the doctrines and traditions of men, which were invented during that time. In doing this, we find ourselves prone to lean towards these doctrines and traditions more than the scriptures of what the first century church wrote, taught, and practiced. Have you ever read the prophecy of the New Covenant in the Old Testament? Let's look at it together. It's found in Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares Yahweh. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So, the law is to be in our heart. Biblically speaking, he couldn't do away with the law. If he did that, 
it wouldn't be in our heart. Just before Yeshua addressed the Pharisees and teachers of the law in Mark 7, he quoted from Isaiah chapter 29. Mark 7. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. Think about it. The prophecy of the new covenant in Jeremiah says that the law will be in our hearts. But is it? Or are we following the example of the Pharisees and teachers of the law to where our hearts are far from him as we focus on teachings of men and set aside his commands? How can the Holy Spirit even convict us of the law in our hearts if our hearts reject the law by way of the teachings of the church. So, test yourself. Whose example are you following? Are you a follower of Christ or of man? We hope you've enjoyed this teaching. Remember, continue to test everything. Shalom. The Apostle Paul, a proclaimed Pharisee turned champion of the faith, writing 13 letters which would later become the pillars of Christian doctrine. Millions today use Paul to teach the changing of the law of God, despite the fact that other scriptures declare something quite contrary to the common interpretations of his writings. King David tells us that the law of God is freedom. But many believe Paul said the law of God is slavery. But Paul also said that we should follow the law of God. And he said that he delights in the law of God. But he also said that we are not under the law. This may be completely new to you. You may have never considered any of this. Welcome to The Pauline Paradox, a modern theological reality in which many turn a blind eye. We confront this paradox head on and seek, once and for all, to understand the true Hebraic context in which his words were originally authored, to bring reconciliation to his words, regardless of the depth of this challenge. We discover that Paul stated that he followed the whole law of God and even taught the law of God. We show how Peter, a person who knew Paul better than any today, warned us of how Paul's writings regarding the law were difficult to understand and how his words are misunderstood easily. If one did not know the Old Testament well enough even 2,000 years ago, Peter warned that misunderstanding Paul would cause one to break the law of God in ignorance. We find that even in the first century, Paul was constantly falsely accused of not keeping the law of God. We even see James defending Paul, proving that Paul kept and taught the law of God. This is all in the Bible. One of the keys to unlocking the context of Paul's letters is to have a proper understanding of the debates of the first century. In this series, we will cross-reference several passages to reveal the ongoing dialogue which occurred between the parties involved. We show how Paul was constantly accused of not teaching the whole law of God, and when he was confronted with such accusations, he always claimed to follow and teach the whole law of God even to the point of paying for sacrifices at the temple to prove such accusations to be false. Does this all sound too crazy to be true? We implore you to test everything, to challenge your faith and seek truth, not tradition. The first teaching in the Pauline Paradox series is titled, Is the Majority Ever Wrong? We address the first mental barrier, which is a misplaced confidence in the self-professed doctrinal experts who claim to understand Paul's words. Then, in the teaching, the Paul you never knew, we reveal words of Paul that many never see, the real Paul, the Paul that kept and taught the whole law of God. Following that, we detail in the teaching 
Why is Paul so difficult to understand? The root cause of why so many misunderstand Paul. This then leads us into the teaching, Which Law Paul? Which to the surprise of many, exposes the fact that Paul was not always just talking about the law of God when he spoke of the law. In fact, Paul mentions at least seven laws. The law of God, the law of sin, the law of sin and death, the law of the spirit of life, the law of faith, the law of righteousness, the law of Christ. What are all these laws and how do they relate to one another? More importantly, how does it help us understand Paul's letters in respect to the law of God to help us avoid the error of the lawless that Peter warns us about in reading Paul's letters? It is in that that we then, verse by verse, dive deep into Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, and more to solve and reconcile the Pauline paradox once and for all. We make it available to you in one series so you can test all of this yourself to the unchanging Word of God. For more free information, including these free video teachings, please visit us at testeverything.net. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations. 119 Ministries is now available on Roku, Apple TV, Google TV, Xbox Live, and more. You can now access dozens of free video teachings straight from your home television in the comfort of your home. If you would like to learn more, please visit us at testeverything.net.